Hey guys, Persistent Programmer here, and today we're going to do another legal question, find all permutations. Great, so let's first understand the question. So we're given an input here, S1 and S2, and we need to find out um, if the S1 or a permutation of S1 exists in S2 or not. So what do I mean by this? So we could have AB or we could have BA, and if this was a longer string like ABC, we would need to see if any permutation of this S1 exists in this S2. So that's essentially what the question is, and if it does, then we need to return true, otherwise we need to return false. Great, so the first solution that came to my mind was just to take this S2, this longer array, and then create a substring, and then sort each substring, and then compare it to AB. So, um, well, this is already sorted, but we would need to sort both of them and then check, okay, does um, the sorted substring equal to this S1 substring? And if it does, we just return true. And yeah, that would solve the problem, but if you try to solve this in leak code with that solution, um, it will give you a time limit exceeded. So they want us to solve this problem in a more optimized way. So what are some things that we can observe from this problem and try to resolve it in a more optimal way? Okay, the first observation we can make is that we're given uh, English letters here. So there are only 26 uh, letters in the alphabet. So is there a way we could create an array and index this with the 26 to figure out what our frequencies are? And yeah, don't worry if this is not the first thing that came to your mind. Obviously, I did not think of this until I did more research and looked at more solutions uh, to help me come up with this idea. But that's essentially the core of this solution is using a 26 um, spot array and then using the elements in the array to index okay how many times does um, this O occur and what position in the array is that going to be so we don't need to worry about space for the solution because um, we have a constant size array great so let's take this idea one step further um, if I had a way to convert my alphabet into a position in the array, so A would be 0, right? So first position would be A, and then second position would be B, and it would go on till the last position, which would be Z, right? What if I took this and applied that to both of my string inputs? So here I have the S1 lookup. So we'll just call this lookup1 for now, just so um, we know it's string1. So we'll say lookup1 here. So this variable lookup1 could hold my converted um, string here. So we know that in zero position there's a A, and in the second position there's a B. So all we're doing here is a first step, which is just mapping. If I had to convert um, this alphabet into a number, what would that number look like in an array? That's all we're doing here, right? And if I took my string 2 and did the same thing, so E is at position 4. So if you look at this, um, E would be here, right? So the array starts at 0. That's why um, you, it's actually 5 if you come from 1. But yeah, you, you get the idea. We're just doing a translation here um, to convert this alphabet into um, our positions in the array, right? So we can call this lookup2. Lookup2. Okay. All right. So we have our lookups now, and we know what numbers or what positions in the array they would be. Now, we need to handle a case where there could be multiple um, inputs, right? So you see this O here? There are three of them. So, okay, well, we got a lookup like this, 14, 14, 14, but I need to have a better frequency system to show that this 14 appears three times, right? So what do we need to do in our second step? So 
we'll just initialize two um, empty lists, empty arrays of 26 size because we know that's the max size we can go. And we will just populate um, here. We'll just look at our lookup table and we will populate first what our target needs to look like. So if I was to take this and if I was looking for the um, right answer in the array that we're looking against, right, what would that look like? So that would just look like this. So we would just have two ones at the first position and that indicates that A and B occurred once and the rest of them are zero because these are the only two inputs we need to consider. So this is our final state that we want um, to see and match against. So if I took this lookup and I had a way of converting it to just map me the frequencies of how many times this A appears in position zero. So here in position zero, A appear once. So that's why there's a one here and then B appear once in the second position. That's why there's a one here. So just stay with me here. I know it's it's a little bit like, it's a lot of variables and um, it, it's, it's a little hard to visualize at first, but I have put all my prints and detailed code in the description. So uh, just stay with me and hopefully you understand it. So that's the idea we're looking for. So we just need to see, okay, if I could, check against this frequency, uh, my answer, then I could get, um, I have a way of finding out if the output is going to be true or not, if there exists um, this permutation of my first string, right? So that's why we have set up this target li list. Now, what we need to do is we need to iterate over our lookup, right? So we need to go over this and what we need to do is check at every position um, if our window meets our target or not, right? And we'll apply the sliding window principle to do this. So I will go through um, how that implementation looks like. So all we're doing here is we're just going to check one by one um, what our output looks like if we took this and if we mapped it out into this um, this array of 26 characters, right? So we will go one by one and at each step we will move the window. So we will check, okay, is um, is EI is EI a possible value in my lookup one, right? A, is this does this match my um, output? And the answer is no, right? So E is here, E is here, and I is here. Well, okay, then I just need to move my window further. So, okay, let me go ID. Okay, so did you see what happened when I moved to ID? I no longer need to check this E here. So I no longer need to check this. So what I'm gonna do is I will just put that position um, as a zero, I will just minus one from here. I no longer need to check this because this is not a valid uh, permutation of my lookup. That's that's all we're doing here. We're just going to move one by one. We will slide the window and we will just check, oh, does my frequency match? Does, does this output equal at each transform state um, when I look through the window? And that's essentially the core of the problem. Great. Now the question arises where I am and how do I check if my window size exceeded? So we know that our chunk size, the size that we need to check against, can only be the same size as our S1 because the permutation of S1 will also be the same size as S1, right? So if we're looping over this, um, we can simply say, okay, if I if my in my for loop, if my i is um, becomes greater or equal to uh, the size of s1, right? We can say, hey, I need to move my window. So the, this is the condition that we need to check against to say, when I'm here at eight, I know that I've exhausted my options here. So I need to move forward and I need to move my window to the next spot. So that is the condition we need to check. 
and we also need to check what my remainder is so how do I how did I minus 1 from here from this e how did I do this part right so I need to check okay give me the remainder from i minus my length of this s1 right so I will get the length of s1 and then I will just minus the i and this will give me my remainder value right. so when I'm at this position when I'm at this d I have already exceeded my chunk size here right so what I need to do is I need to calculate my remainder at this point and here the i is 2 right so this is 2 I'm at the second uh, position in the for loop so i equals 2 here and what I need to do is I need to remove this first um, this first e because it had no value to me when I uh, checked against the target right so what I need to do then is say okay well my i is 2 and the size of s1 is also 2 so remainder is 2 minus 2 which is 0 now I need to uh, check this remainder in my um, array over here and remove that position put a minus 1 there because we've already checked that spot and that frequency so how do I do this how do I take this remainder 0 and and uh, minus 1 from the right spot in this array right so what what this lookup table 2 is for is for translating that so Great, so I have this remainder now, and now all I need to do is look up that position of the remainder in my lookup 2. And what I can see is that that will give me a 4, because I look up over here, and in position 0 is the E at 4, right? So, okay, well, I will take this value, and I will, in my array, minus 1 from here. And that's what all we're doing to keep tally of what we've checked and what we haven't checked. So let's go through these three iterations. So here the remainder was zero and this is the case we went through. And we we had a one here previously and we did minus one from there, so we have a zero. And now uh, what we checked is, hey, is this, um, is this matching equal to this matching? Because you remember, this is our final state of frequency we want, right? So uh, we checked here and well, no, it doesn't match. Then in our next iteration, we move our window forward. So we were here, and then we move from here to here, right? And when we look up this 1 in our lookup 2 table, um, so that is 8. So we move that position. We move that i. So that's all we're doing here. We move that i, um, and we remove that 1 from there. So did you see how this 1 became a 0 here? So that's what we're doing. That's the entire slide, sliding window technique, right? So that is a zero, and no, our our um, array still doesn't match. And then in the next iteration, we remove the D, right? And we are now at B and A. And did you see how this got removed? So this is now a zero, and since we are at a B and A, we matched. And this is this is when it will return true. Okay, and if there are no matches, we just go ahead, we iterate through all our um, items and we just return a false. And that's essentially what the problem is. Like, all we need to do at the end is just check, does our window match our target? And if yes, return true, else return false. Okay, I hope this made sense. And now let's go ahead and look at the code and it will be even more clear. Uh, what we're trying to do here and I've put more examples in the code as well so we can follow through with those. Awesome, so I'm back in the code and I have my solution here and the first thing I've done is created my two lookups. So these are the prints for the two lookups and if you're not familiar with this I would just go ahead and do some research on the or D function and how just in general uh, list comprehension works in Python but if you were to do it in your um, own language, you can still get these values. As long as you're getting the results of lookup one and two in these formats, that, that's the basic idea. And you can your solution and idea will still work. Okay, so the next thing we did is just initialize two um, arrays of size 26. And what I'm doing here is I'm just 
populating um, our answer. So what should the target array look like? So as we discussed, the target array will have one in the first place and then one in the second. So this represents the A and B that we're looking for. And the next thing I did, okay, and this is this is where this is the lookup where um, we are iterating through our um, second um, array here, the second lookup. Um, and what we're doing is we are doing our window sizing and we are adding to the window and we are also uh, removing from the window. So here is a check where we check if our window size has exceeded or not. So if i is greater than um, or equal to the size of our chunk that we want to check against, then that tells me that, okay, we need to slide this window. And this is how I calculate the remaining, which I discussed in the solution. And the next thing to do is just look up that remaining value. So in our first case, we got a zero, right? And when we look up that zero, we get four here. So I've, I've put very detailed notes here. So four, and then we go ahead and we uh, remove that four from our answer to check against. Right, so that's the way we are continuously looping over this window and changing the size of the window. And what we're trying to see is if the window equals to the target, then we just return true. And that's how we are solving this problem. So we, at each step, we are adding to our frequency of the window, right? So we don't just create the entire window because we are iter we want to iterate through each of these individual characters one by one and check does this match right does this match um, my same frequency of my target window and that's what this line is doing here okay and i will go ahead and run this code Okay, answer is true, that's what we expected, and submit. Awesome, it works. Thanks guys, I hope this video helped you understand the problem, and if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel. Happy coding, guys!